Hi, this is Noel Gordon, Executive Editor for the Trusted Beauty Guide and Trusted Fitness Guide. This is part two of my um, seafood pasta. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to chop some garlic. Now, I find the best way for me, personally, you might find it different, chop the garlic down the middle first, like you can see, two halves, keep the halves together, then make slightly smaller, longer bits, like so, if you can see that in the camera. Then we're going to chop those into smaller bits. Now, obviously, holding using your fingers, watch your fingers with this. This you need one ideally use a serrated knife. This cuts through them better, and I'll show you the chops and the chunks in a minute. If you can see those chunks, they're not particularly big. They release a lot of garlic flavour into the food, which really does add to the flavour. Obviously, because when you put the, the chili and stuff in there, it also changes the flavour a little bit. But the base is what's going to basically flavour the fish. Keep chopping the garlic. There we go, keep chopping those. Let's get a little bit musical while we do this. If you guys hold on with me. So there we go, we have some nice chill out music in the background. You'll probably hear it come in a little while. these. Now you notice I've put about two or three cloves in I put um, of garlic. I like garlic. For those that you know got a date tonight they might not want to um, add it in it but um, yeah I like garlic. Garlic's good. Now I, was, I, was, I learned how to do this a very long time ago and um, how to basically dice an onion. Now you can do it in several ways. You can cut down it like this and create you know like sections like this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to dice it, so what you need to do, obviously chop the onion in half, chop down into the middle parts here, I'll show you in a second in the camera, so we end up is like sort of uh, spaced out, and you hold these bits together quite tightly because it does slip, and then just chop straight through. You don't know, you probably need just over a quarter of it, you can see that in the camera. Not particularly big chunks again, you know, just a little bit bigger than the garlic. Right now, obviously you need to get the fish in there, so let's move all this to the side. Let's get the heat on. There we go. Right, let's leave that doing, let's turn that down so we don't want the garlic to brown off. Right, yeah, if you're going to use mackerel or, or whatever you want, you can, you know. But as I say, this is um, this is Vietnamese river cobbler. So I chop that into small chunks. You don't want it too big. Again, because you want it to really merge in with the food. When it cooks in, you don't want anything to stand out too much. Obviously, the prawns and the crab claws will a little bit, but you want any of this to be on the whole dish rather than just part of it. Okay, let's just drop those bits in. Make sure they all come apart. I see, you know, it's quite small, the bits I've cut, you know, they're not too big. Of course, throw the crab claws in as they are. Get the prawns. Now, for those of you who like to, you can butterfly these prawns if you want to. I'm just going to use the serrated knife. Oh, if it moves. You can cut into them, you can cut down the back of them. What you can do is you can just butterfly these. But I'm not going to butterfly them, I'm just going to drop them in with the shells. Again, it just makes this a little bit more fun. You know, people get their fingers dirty, really. You know, it makes it, I find, getting, you know, sort of finger food really makes the dish fun. Maybe one or two tomatoes in to start off with. And this is just because I just want to add some flavour in it. It's one or two of them. I'm not going to add the tomato, all the tomatoes just yet. So it adds a little bit of different juice to the, the mix. Now, um, this is the uh, pepper sauce. This is the pepper sauce. Now, um, it's up to you, as I say, if you want to add chili. You don't have to. I just like the flavour of it, so I'm just going to add it in. A little bit of salt. A lot of black pepper or um, rainbow peppercorns if you're using those. Quite a bit in there. Now the squid. You will need a shot knife. The squid is slippery. 
Now you want to cut it maybe into sixths. If that's quite the right saying, but six. As I say, this, this dish will go better with octopus. Um, those that are scared of cooking octopus, it's actually quite easy to cook. Ideally, you might want to um, give the octopus just a little bit of a hard boil beforehand, not too much, before you fry it, because otherwise it can be quite rubbery. Dun, 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 dun. Sitting away nicely there. Get those pots. I'm going to stick tentacles and all in there, but as I say, if you don't like this sort of fish, you can just change it. You know, obviously, to not, not nothing too extreme where it really changes the flavour, but you know, mackerel's okay, yeah, it does have quite a strong flavour, but it does really add to the dish. Let's give that a little stir so you don't like to burn the bottom. Real, oh, if you can smell this, it's amazing. And don't forget, guys, as I've mentioned before, you know, I know it seems like a lot that I'm doing, but as always, if you put in the effort, you get a great result. Okay, last bits of the squid going in. Well, now we do want to get the pan quite hot. We're going to flame it in a minute. Turn this light off in a second when I start flaming it, so you can actually see the flames. What's well, better, I don't think you'll miss them. Then we mix the heat so that warms up. There we go, add some of that to it. Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots. That's some more black pepper by the way. Oh, it smells amazing. Give it a nice mix over. Right, let's get that brandy in there. Probably just about hot enough. There we go, can you see the flame on there folks? If you can't, let me turn the light off. Can you see that? Don't be scared, honestly, it's, it's only a little bit of flame, it really does add to the flavour of this. What you're doing is you're burning off the alcohol. I'm just going to actually let all the alcohol burn up. I'm not going to stir it, I'm not going to do anything to it, I'm just going to let the alcohol burn. Now, don't put too much alcohol in there because you will burn the ceiling. Um, obviously, I only put, you know, I'll probably a finger space in a reasonable size glass, maybe two finger spaces. That's probably enough there. If you flames are too much, you can just blow it. Don't blow too hard, but blow across. Gone. See? And all that, oh, it smells amazing. Right, now let that fish cook in a little bit. Well, obviously you would want it to boil the kettle by now. Um, obviously you want to add those. In a minute I'm going to add some of the more tomatoes. I'm going to add the mushrooms and some of the baby leaf spinach. Let's give this a little chop. To be honest, I won't chop these. I'm just going to rip these because, you know, they're, they're so light and, you know, really do add to it. They can have a very, very slight rubbery texture to them, um, but they are very tasty, so it's worth it. Just break them and use your fingers, as you can see. There we go. Let's break those open. If you want, any of you like the music, you can hear in the bang, and if you can hear it, um, it's by Decibels and Me. There. Right, this dish, what I've shown you here, um, could probably do it for about four or five people sitting. Um, you know, I haven't used a massive amount of ingredients, you know, um, probably a handful and a bit of, um, of um, fresh pasta. Let's give that a little mix. Uh, 
anything smelling this has got to be simple. Um, right, put some more black pepper in there. There's nothing wrong, guys, with adding this. If you actually a little bit of seasoning, because if you don't season your food properly, it doesn't have the right flavour. Don't be scared about seasoning. Add some more tomatoes now. Probably added about eight, eight um, baby plum tomatoes all together. Take that away. Well, what I'm doing is I'm just going to get rid of them, um, trying to get the sauce to boil up a little bit. Basically, because in a minute I'm going to add some creme fraiche to this. So I want the sauce to just reduce down just a little bit quicker. So obviously, all the seafood and everything's this side, and it's just this little area here that's cooking quite hard. That should be enough. Mix all that in. Mm, lovely. Right now, if you're wondering why I haven't had baby a baby leaf um, spinach just yet, it's just because it is quite delicate and it cooks extremely quickly. You don't want it to overcook um, simply because it will just ruin ruin the taste. Get a bit soggy. Um, let's get the creme fresh. One second. Now, don't make the mistake that I've made of the many attempts of making this. Um, don't put too much creme fraiche in, it will be too creamy and you'll hate yourself for it. You'll ruin a perfectly good dish and I have done it many a time so please learn by my experience. Probably one teaspoon is probably enough. Don't, don't try that first and try the texture, mix it together then take a spoon and try it. If it tastes too creamy, you know, you put too much in basically. So let's just give that a little mix in. I'm going to turn the heat down because I don't want it to ruin the creme fraiche too much. Mix. Mm, amazing. I just wish you guys could smell and taste this, but unfortunately you can't, so hopefully you'll go home and try this. Try. Oh, it's a little bit more kind of fresh. So I reckon probably. Um, probably. Two, t two teaspoons, not too much, you know, two teaspoons worth is probably more than enough creme fraiche. On that. Right, now what we need to do is we're going to flash boil the pasta. And the pasta will cook extremely quickly, it takes a maximum of about, say, two minutes maybe three minutes. As soon as it rises to the top of that, it's ready. That's literally how quick it takes. Get some pans ready, so you can see it. You can see it's got this lovely buttery, creamy colour to it. A little mix. And obviously when this goes on a plate, imagine it's mixed in with pasta and some greens and your guests will absolutely love it. Maybe do some garlic bread. Try not to buy the ready-made stuff, make your own garlic bread. It's very easy. In a later episode, I'll show you how to make garlic bread. It really is, you know, really, really easy. And again, if you put in the effort, you get a great result. I'm just going to let that sit there for a while and just simmer very, very lightly. I don't want to leave it for too long now because obviously I don't want the fish to break down too much. It has started to a little bit. So, um, tell you what we're going to do, we're going to make a swap. Get that on big heat. Turn that one down. And this will probably boil up quite quickly now. And, you know, to be honest, it's, it's probably about a quarter of the way done already. A little stir. Um, you won't find this stick so much, but I'm going to get this a little bit salt in the water. 
Right, um, if you're going to use the normal stick pasta, again, it's not one of my favourites, but if you're going to use the normal stick pasta, you can add a little bit of olive oil to the water before you put the pasta in to help it not stick. Add some salt maybe as well. All little tricks that help it stop it sticking. Well, that's almost ready. pretty much done now. Right, I'm just gonna add um, just gonna add the spinach to this. Just break it, rip it. Obviously pre-wash this beforehand. Mix it in. You see all the colours and that mixing it, adding like a really, really nice texture to it. And because it's baby leaf spinach, it, you know, it, it doesn't add too much insult to the flavour, it sort of sits there nicely. There we go. Lovely mixed colours. The pasta is ready. In part three, I'll show you a finished product.